Hello everyone, this is Chad, and in this uh, movie what we'll cover is the recent actions by the Federal Reserve, uh, the press release date of June 29th, and the significance of that action. Uh, in accordance, we'll also uh, be talking about the IMF's Enhanced Structural Adjustment Facility, also known as ESAF, and is that working or not? That's also an important topic to cover. Lastly, we will uh, cover what happens when a country goes bust. Um, we'll also talk about the uh, IMF emergency loan um, outstanding in that topic and also uh, a little bit of a description and detail about uh, how Argentina's collapse had occurred. So with that said, let's get started. Press release from the FOMC board minutes. The Bank of Canada, Bank of England, European Central Bank, Federal Reserve and the Swiss National Bank on this day announced an extension of the existing temporary U.S. dollar liquidity swap agreements through August 1, 2012. The Bank of Japan will consider this extension at its next monetary policy meeting. The swap agreements established May 2010 had been authorized through August 1, 2011. This is a very interesting monetary policy change as of late. Central bank liquidity swap definition. It's a type of currency swap used by a country's central bank to provide liquidity of its currency to another central bank. On December 12, 2007, the FOMC committee announced that it had authorized temporary reciprocal currency agreements, central bank liquidity line swaps, with the European Central Bank and the Swiss National Bank to help provide liquidity in U.S. dollar overseas markets. Subsequently, the FOMC authorized liquidity swap lines with additional central banks. The swap lines are designed to improve liquidity conditions in the U.S. and foreign financial markets by providing foreign central banks with the capital to deliver U.S. dollar funding to institutions in their jurisdiction during times of market stress. As of April of 2009, swap lines were authorized with the following institutions. Reserve Bank of Australia, the Banco Central do Brazil, the Bank of Canada, Denmark's National Bank, Bank of England, the ECB, European Central Bank, Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, Banco de Mexico, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, Norges Bank, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Sierges Rieks Bank, and the Swiss National Bank. The FOMC authorized these liquidity swap lines through October 30th of 2009. The Federal Reserve operates swap lines under the authority of Section 14 of the Federal Reserve Act in compliance with authorization policies and procedures established by the FOMC. Now this is important to note. Don't you notice it's part of the Federal Reserve Act under Section 14. This allows the Federal Reserve to do this without any authorization from the U.S. Congress. The definition. These swaps involve two transactions with the foreign central bank draws on swap lines with the Federal Reserve. The foreign central bank sells specified amounts of its currency to the Federal Reserve in exchange for dollars at the prevailing market exchange rate. The Federal Reserve holds the foreign currency in an account at the foreign central bank. The dollars then that the Federal Reserve provides are deposited in an account at that foreign central bank that maintains at the foreign at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. At the same time, the Federal Reserve and the foreign central bank enter, enter a, into a binding agreement for a second transaction that obligates the foreign central bank to buy back its currency on a specified future date at the same exchange rate. The second transaction unwinds the first. At the conclusion of the second transaction, the foreign central bank pays interest at the market-based rate to the Federal Reserve. Lastly, when the foreign central bank lends the dollars it obtains by drawing on its swap line to institution in its jurisdiction, the dollars are transferred from the foreign central bank account at the Federal Reserve to account of the, of the bank of the borrowing institution uses to clear its dollar transactions. The foreign central bank remains ob obligated to return the dollars to the Federal Reserve under the terms of the agreement, and the F Federal Reserve is not a counterparty to the loan extended by the foreign central bank. 
The foreign central bank bears the credit risk associated with the loan it makes to insti its institutions in its jurisdiction. To, to this point, what can we conclude? That the recent and recent past IMF and central bank gold sales into the marketplace to add quick liquidity did not work. Number two, more foreign central banks are running short of U.S. dollars. Number three, foreign bank depositors are fleeing the euro and exchanging all for U.S. dollars. Number four, a strategic U.S. dollar devaluation in the foreign exchange markets is guaranteed at this point. And lastly, number five, a collapse of the euro and other currencies using the swap lines by the Federal Reserve will fail to pay them back based upon the structure of these lines in association with prevailing market exchange rates. The IMF's Enhanced Structural Adjustment Facility, also known as ESAF, is it working? The 1980s and early 1990s were an exceptionally difficult period for low-income developing countries, particularly in Africa. Many economies had been brought to the point of collapse by years of economic mismanagement and advertised external shocks, culminating in the debt crises of the 1980s. As government began essential tasks of restructuring and rebuilding their economies, per capita income stagnated or declined. This experience led some observers to question the effectiveness of the remedies embodied in the IMF supported adjustment programs, especially those backed by the ESAF, the facility established in 1987 through which the IMF provides low interest loans to poor countries. Some even describe these remedies as part of the problem rather than the solution. Partly to examine these concerns, in the 1997 the IMF undertook two extensive reviews of the ESAF, including one by a team of ex external evaluators. Lastly, both of these reviews endorsed the basic policy approach embodied in the ESAF supported programs while making a number of suggestions that have strengthened the facility and the programs it supports. What happens when a country goes bust? Well, let's take a look at the case of Argentina. The case of Argentina, which declared a moratorium on its debt repayments in December 2001 and within days defaulted on $93 billion in sovereign borrowing, it was the beginning of a nightmare. There's no bankruptcy courts for nations. Defaulting sovereigns pay the ultimate price. The only recourse is to the International Monetary Fund, which can provide emergency loans. Currently, the IMF has a pot of money made up from 187 member countries. 200 billion from con contributing countries, which is almost certainly inadequate to the scale of the potential demand that might emerge in the coming months or a few short years. In 2000, 2007, total outstanding loans stood at 7 billion, 463 million, 564 thousand, 945 dollars. So far, after the crisis and up to current date in 2011. The $200 billion in availability for emergency loans in the IMF has gotten chewed down by a whopping $134,345,234,875 dollars. Emergency loans countries that have accepted emergency loan include Iceland at $2 billion, Ukraine at $16 billion, Hungary is expecting double digits in the billions, and we have commitments of an additional 15% of the kitty of what's left for the total pot, and the dominoes are falling fast. For Argentina, the months that followed its bankruptcy were horrendous. The country went into a brutal downward spiral of inflation, currency collapse, and the rationing of cash by banks. In a nation that is a big agriculture exporter, children went hungry, and the economy imploded, shrinking by 13% in a year. Unable to borrow to pay its bills, the state was forced to cut public sector wages, slash state pensions, and unemployment soared to 20%. Unable to pay for goods with cash, many Argentinas resorted to barter. A sovereign default forces a nation into self-reliance mode, 
and if the government lacks the will to reform its economy, it will tempted to print money to pay wages and pensions. When the choice is between paying Citigroup and paying pensioners, the political choice is obvious. However, it is no solution as the result is hyperinflation and more chaos. The default on Argentina's commercial loans was bad enough, but that followed a year later was the default of $800 million loan from the World Bank. It became embroiled in lengthy negotiations with the IMF and debtor clubs. The country had borrowed too much in foreign currencies, and it made matters worse for itself by pegging the value of its currency to the U.S. dollar. Argentina became uncompetitive and slipped into recession and then eventually a full-blown economic depression. When the currency peg was finally served, the peso collapsed and the country was unable to repay its debts. Lastly, the IMF loans come with tough medicine and it is this that makes the institution unpopular as its intervention is greatly feared. Countries will be forced into making tough budget cuts, tax increases, and measures designed to control inflation. A harsh monetary tightening aimed at shoring up its currencies and debts will be further misery to its people. So the conclusions I inquire over this movie and the research I've done that goes into this movie is that recent actions by the Federal Reserve increasing their swap lines is a signal that foreign depositors are exiting their country's currency and demanding U.S. dollars. Ultimately, this is increase in the U.S. dollar uh, supply amount to exchange into for the foreign depositors. In addition, the IMF loans are dwindling at an exceptionally rapid pace. The selling of gold into the marketplace by central banks and the IMF uh, to provide quick liquidity did not work. Um, a strategic U.S. dollar devaluation in the foreign exchange markets is eventually guaranteed. Uh, collapse in the Eurozone and other currencies that use the swap lines by the Federal Reserve will eventually pay, fail to pay them back based upon the structure of those lines and associated with uh, prevailing market exchange rates. The Eurozone pig countries and other countries that accept IMF loans run a huge risk of default in today's financial crises and debt overload environment. Higher unemployment is guaranteed. Additional monetary tightening in all means is guaranteed. The IMF emergency loan borrowers in today's global financial structure will be affected more severe than others. Hyperinflation in certain countries that provide stimulus and those who are large shareholders in the IMF emergency loan programs will greatly be affected. Uh, IMF will eventually go broke. The need for additional IMF emergency loans will increase at the same time. And lastly, this guarantees higher commodity prices and they will continue to go up. I hope you enjoyed this movie. Uh, it took quite a while to get this information uh, together and I hope with the information that I provided to you you have a much clearer picture on what has happened based upon recent Federal Reserve actions uh, IMF emergency loan situation liquidity swap lines and kind of the overall picture of what's going on so stay calm get out of your Federal Reserve notes get into precious metals this is Chad y'all take care